Africa. This continent in E4 has got a lot of attention recently with the new expansion Origins. But Paradox have sadly forgotten perhaps the most interesting region in the whole of Africa, which is North Africa. Africa overall during this time didn't have much of an international impact in comparison to Europe or Asia. However, there were clearly a few exceptions like Mansa Mura, who was among the richest individuals in the world, and showed it off on his extravagant pilgrimage to Mecca. But if we had to pick one part of Africa that was influential, it would have to be North Africa. Around the start date of EE4, Europeans struggled to deal with the Babu pirates. These pirates even became such a threat that France declared a Barbary Crusade and attacked Mahdia in 1390. It was therefore a massive shame that North Africa was not focused on at all in E4 Origins. Maybe Paradox don't want to encourage piracy in their games. But despite the limited love given to North Africa, we are going to delve into what exactly this region looked like at the 1444 start date. I can say that from all the regions I've covered, from the British Isles to Italy, this is one of the most inaccurate regions to date. Now I wouldn't say it's completely Paradox's fault, because there's really limited sources during this time in comparison to its European neighbours. But perhaps some of the nations I suggest could be added into the game, and it might make this region a lot more exciting to play in. What would be even more exciting for myself though, is that you like and subscribe from this video. These map videos take hours of research, so it would be great if you could show your support, and we are trying to get to 75,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We will start by going from west to east, which means we will begin with Morocco. Paradox over time has added a bit more to Morocco, with them now having a few more vassals. Everyone knows the meme vassal of sus, there's honestly too many Among Us jokes in our Discord, please stop. Paradox, however, have not added enough to make it historically accurate, and next to Morocco is the Principality of Debdu. This was first established in 1430, and was an autonomous hereditary vice royalty. Given it's between Morocco and Tlemcen, I could see a reason to add it in. There's literally only two sources I could find on them, written a hundred years ago in French. But we do know what their leader was called, and was ruled by the Ibn Hamu family. This principality, however, was eventually gotten rid of in the mid-16th century. Researching Morocco was very confusing. However, what I did find is Morocco had a lot of autonomy in the south of the country, with tribes controlling the region. This was known as the Bled Siba, which is a historical term referring to the lawless areas that the Moroccan Sultan had no control over. One person I spoke to suggested they get rid of a Tafelol tag and replace it with a stateless society. This is of course up to interpretation, and Paradox have decided to go with what you see now. I finally was able to find a bit of flavour about Sous, which has basically none in game. The Sous region, like other parts of Morocco, experienced religious and political unrest around the time of EE4. Sous was also rich in minerals and was wealthy. At the end of the day, I think there's quite a lot of things that could be changed in Morocco to make it more historically accurate and fun. It would however be great to get your thoughts in the comments about whether adding more flavour to Sous and a stateless society would improve the game. We now move on to Tlemcen, which is certainly an interesting part of North Africa during this time. I propose three new E4 nations could be added into the game in this area. We start with Algiers, which is ruled under the Falba tribe. Around the start date of E4, they assassinated their new king in 1438, and placed himself under the protection of this powerful tribe which was one of the most powerful tribes in the region. They also made a religious scholar head of their city council from this tribe. After his death in 1479, this man's tomb became an important site of popular devotion. He left a legacy of more than a hundred books, and his tomb is still visited today. Therefore, the creators of E4 could acknowledge this famous leader in the Islamic world, and I'm sure he'd have six admin in game, with some good missionary strength perks. The other two nations I think should be added could be Oran and Tenez, who were vassal sultanates under Tlemcen and later gained their independence. I think it's important to recognise these vassals, as it is a good way to show off the Tlemcen decline with a splintering of states. What I would say though, is it might not make sense to add these nations in, given the fact it may clog up North Africa too much. It would be interesting to get your thoughts on it though. The final part of North Africa I wish to discuss is Tunis and the surrounding nations. 
There's actually a lot more flavour than you might think, and the nation placing is a little off. Mazab, for instance, was much smaller and didn't border Tunis. Tunis is also not represented as it should be, and actually a rebellion was occurring during this time in the western part of the country, which was from the Hafsids of Bajaya. This was a dynasty of independent emirs. At times they recognised the caliph in Tunis, and other times they ruled independently. Around the start date of EE4, the Hafsids of Bajaya did not recognise Tunis as their overlord. The rebellion was brutal, and the Tunisian leader Uthman had defeated the Bajaya leader Abdul al-Hassan in 1436. Although Tunis was able to recapture Bajaya in 1439, Abu al-Hassan escaped and continued to resist for 12 more years. He even recaptured Bajaya in 1446, just two years after the start date of EU4. He was eventually executed after Abu was betrayed by his allies. But the fact Tunis was under rebellion maybe should be acknowledged in EU4, maybe as an event or having rebels at the start of a game in the Kabul region, or at the very least making Bajaya an EU4 tag in-game. Another nation that could be added in game is Neftar. The date it became a vassal of Tunis was somewhere between 1440 and 1446, which is obviously around the start date of EU4. Therefore, Paradox have the option to add this nation in if they so desire. I personally feel adding this nation would bring a bit more flavour to the region, and everyone in EU4 do love their one province miners. There's also the nation of Urugla, which controlled a vital Saharan trading route, making them very wealthy. There's also a few other things in the region, such as the Oros tribes and Metali, but I think I've covered the most important and interesting parts of this region. Ultimately, I believe particularly this part of North Africa could be changed to make it more historically accurate and fun. I know Paradox obviously want to focus on Europe, but I'm not even sure some of these nations existed in game, like Dejerud, and perhaps something should have been done to make this region more historically accurate. However, having said this, it is still the hardest region by far to research, in comparison to Europe. So finally, having a look at the history of the Mamluks and doing a video on them a week ago, I found I could make a whole video on what should and shouldn't be added to this region. But I did want to focus on the western part of North Africa, and perhaps I could do a follow-up video covering the Mamluks in the Middle East map video. Anyway, what do you guys think of my suggestions for the region of North Africa? And do you think it would make the game more fun? This has probably been the hardest region to research, given the scarcity of resources. Having said this, the region is actually way more interesting than meets the eye, and definitely worth adding to. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, and also subscribe to Dodo Lulu Pepe for helping me make this video. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.